I've been collecting retro gaming stuff on and off for most of my adult life. And when I decided to start making YouTube videos, I thought this all would make a pretty good backdrop. And I must have been onto something with that because ever since I started doing this, I've gotten a lot of comments like, hey, nice background or cool collection. And a few people who've even wanted a closer look at everything that I have. So today I thought it would be kind of fun to do something a little different. Today I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit close. I'm gonna get behind it and let you all take a good look at the shit I have. Okay, so I wanna start here with my cassette tape collection. And one thing you may notice is that only about half of these are actual audio cassette tapes. The rest of these are actually Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. This is a really cool way of displaying Game Boy games I found while browsing YouTube one day. I found a really good how-to video that showed you an easy way to do this. Uh, show off probably the only really notable Game Boy Advance game I have, Lunar Legend. Well, then I also have both Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age. I love the Golden Sun games. Those are so great. Uh, but yeah, again, I will leave a link to the description of the how-to video I found. Sorry, I was trying to put that back in. Camera got a little weird. Anyways, I'll leave a link to the how-to video in the description I found. If you're curious about this yourself, again, it's a great way of displaying your Game Boy games, and I really love it. Moving on here, we have my wall calendar, which is called the Karma Putra, and every month is a different poop in position. You can see for this month, for the month of April, it is the airplane crash. And right next to that, we have Sting. This is just a really cool display piece, and it's only a display piece. It is not sharp, and I don't think you can sharpen it without damaging it. So it's a display piece, and it's really cool. I really like that thing. Moving on, something else you don't get to see a whole lot because it's usually off camera, are these larger models up here. We've got the big Millennium Falcon. This is by far the most expensive model I have. It's like a $400 model, took about a week to build, and I'm not sure how well it really comes across on camera, but it is a really large model of the Millennium Falcon. And next to that we have the Gundam Death Scythe from Gundam Wing. Gundam Wing is still the only Gundam series I really like. I'm watching through the original Gundam right now and it's okay, but Gundam Wing I think is amazing. And next to that we have the Battlestar Galactica and a Cylon. I love Battlestar Galactica. I've really been meaning to re-watch through that series for a while now. And you'll see later that I have it on Blu-ray, I just haven't gotten around to watching it yet. So moving on here, we have my video games, which are all on this bookcase here, which quick note on this bookcase, this is actually an antique that I got when my uh, grandmother passed away, probably about 10 years ago or so now. Uh, this is an antique that we've, my family has had since like the 1940s. So this is an old piece of furniture right here, this bookcase, and I really like that I can put my video games in it. So a little closer look at all my video games here. Uh, PS4 first up. The only really not notable PS4 game I have here is the uh, Deluxe Edition of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, that's the one that has the soundtrack and the art book and the uh, steel case, the uh, steel book case for the game. Then over the PS3, uh, PS3 is the one console that I kind of don't really have anything especially noteworthy for. Like, I like the PS3 okay, but I just don't feel like there's any games on it that, like, really stand out. Like, especially when compared to what came before and even what came after it. Moving on, we have my PS2 games. And I have one PS2 game that I think is really noteworthy. And that's this right here. Mr. Mosquito. Now, when I bought this game... I bought it as a joke because I thought it looked like pure shit. I got home and I played it. I was right. The game sucks. But when I bought it, this was maybe like 7 maybe 12 bucks at the most. But in recent years, because of the way that the collecting market is, this is now like a $90 game. And I just don't get it. Like, I understand supply and demand. But the demand for this game should not be as high as it is. Because it's pretty shit. So next up we have, get Vader out of the way here, uh, also get Luigi out of the way. Next up we have my PS1 games, which are sort of the pride and joy of my collection. The PS1 is my favorite console to collect for, 
And the highlights for this console for me are these three big box games. I've got the Ark the Lad collection and both of the Lunar games. Now, Ark the Lad here, before I did a video kind of going over some of the more expensive games in my collection, and I did go over Ark the Lad in that video, which I'll put in one of the title cards or something like that. So, um, Ark the Lad here, I used to not have the memory card holder that comes with it. I have since found that memory card holder, so this is now complete in box. This version of Lunar, which I'm actually currently working on a review of this game, so make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel so you can check that out when I have it finished. It'll take a while because my reviews just, in general, take a bit to get done. And Lunar 2 is kind of complete in box. There is a medallion that originally came with this game, but it is virtually impossible to find these days. I've looked all over eBay the last couple of years, and for the life of me, I cannot find it. So moving on from that, a couple more PS1 games, then we have my PSP collection. No especially noteworthy games in the PSP, I mean the uh, Final Fantasy 1, 2, and War of the Lions. I really like these. Those are great versions of those games. Then I also have a decent collection of PSP movies here. Uh, Gundam Wing Endless Waltz. That is the only real standout I have for PSP movies, I think. I just really like Gundam Wing again. That is my favorite Gundam series. And then I also have The Matrix because that is just the edgiest way to watch that movie. Next to that, we've got the DS and 3DS collection. Now, the only really noteworthy DS and 3DS game I have is Dragon Quest IV here. I bought this brand new when it came out because I played the original Dragon Warrior IV on the NES. And I never finished that one and I wanted to uh, finish it. So when this version came out, I was like, okay, I'm finally going to finish it. And I did. But I have really been meaning to go back and replay it. And I actually really want to review it. And the main reason why I haven't is because I just don't know how to record gameplay footage off of the DS or 3DS, aside from just pointing my camera right at the screen. And I just don't like the way that looks. So if you know any other ways to record that gameplay footage, I mean, maybe emulation, but I kind of don't like emulating DS games just because it doesn't feel right. Just handhelds in general don't feel right when you emulate. So anyways, if you know a good way that I can record DS or 3DS gameplay footage, let me know in the comments below. Sorry, I knocked some shit on the floor here. Moving on to our last row of games. We've got our Wii U and Wii games. Let's get this Star Story out of the way a little bit. So for the Wii U, I have... Here, where is it? Breath of the Wild HD, as well as the uh, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. But Breath of the Wild is interesting to have in, this, uh, in my collection here, the Wii U version. Because right now, it's not really worth much anything. You know, not especially compared to the Switch version. But I'm curious about where that will be in a few years, so I'm going to hold on to that. Now, in the Wii collection here, you can probably already see the standout is the uh, Last Story Collector's Edition. This has the soundtrack and the art book. Then I also have here the... Oops. The uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy, which... Oh, God, I want them to put this on the Switch. It is a great collection, and all three of those games are fantastic. And putting them on the Switch just makes way too much sense to not do. Moving on, the GameCube, the system that is so hard to find anything for right now. That's why I have, like, four... How many, how many GameCube games do I have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's hard to find GameCube games right now. But the standout I have here is Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. This is a great version of that game. And right now, I think it's worth close to $100. It's really gone up in recent years. And this is one of those rare occasions that the price like that might almost be worth it, because it's legitimately a really good version of that game. So moving on, we have some of my uh, cartridge games here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So with my cartridge games, what I'm doing, you can see that these are all labeled with masking tape. And the reason why I did that is because I found a super cheap lot that had like 50 of these cases for 30 bucks because they all already have Sharpie written on them. Now, it would probably just take a little bit of elbow grease to get that Sharpie off, but I'm lazy and masking tape works just fine. Moving on. <sighs> okay. 
Next we have this little tower of models and goodies here. Got a couple models there. This cute little cube diorama here. I like this thing. I got this on Etsy. Uh, Pokemon, I think Fire Red, Leaf Green. Professor Oak, giving you your choice at the beginning. Very nostalgic. Then we have the only amiibo I ever bought. The Wolf Link amiibo that came with Twilight Princess HD. And the only reason why I even got it was because it came with Twilight Princess. Uh, then we got the X-Wing model. That was, I think... This actually may have been like the first model I ever built, or maybe the second, something like that. We've got another diorama here. Final boss of the original Final Fantasy. I really like this thing. This is so cool. I could just stare at these dioramas for hours at a time. They, I just think they're so neat. <laughs> okay. Moving on, we got some more models. Uh, TIE Fighter with one of the pews that fell out. Because it comes with pew pews. And then we got the Death Star 2. Some more models. And guess what? Even more models. Now over here, this here is, I think, one of my favorite pieces of the entire collection. This is a piece of original artwork by a local artist uh, named Alistair Kirby. He's really on and off with social media, so I will see if he's on social media right now, and I'll leave a link to his stuff in the description below, because he is fantastic. And I really love that I have this art piece here. It's basically a combination of Vegeta in his ape form combined with David Bowie, and that's just a neat combination. And I was super glad I was able to swoop that up from him. Moving on from here. Okay, this is a really cool piece too. This is an audio play version of The Hobbit on cassette tape. And I actually do have a cassette player. I have listened to these. It is a really neat production. I think they also have this on Audible now if you're curious about this. And this team also did the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy as well. So as you can see, I don't have that yet. I've only got The Hobbit so far, but I do plan to eventually find the entire series in this collection because this is such a neat way to display them. I love the little wooden box. It's so cool. Then we've got the Xbox games, Xbox and Xbox 360. Um, yeah, even though I have them, I don't care all that much about the Xbox, just in general. You know, it just never really clicked for me. There are some decent games on it. Like, I actually really liked Lost Odyssey. That was a lot of fun. Um, but anyways, moving on from here, I have the entire original run of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Big fan of this series. Uh, I actually named my dog Vegeta. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that on this channel yet. I probably have before. Um, but yeah, he's a little shit, and I love him. So down here, I have my Atari 2600 games. Now, the way I got these is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe five or six years ago, my sister's friend was going to move to Colorado for maybe three to six months or so. And he was originally going to just come right back. But this was like five, six years ago, and we haven't heard or seen from him since. So, yeah, these are mine now. Uh, I kind of am thinking about selling these just because I don't really have a connection to the Atari 2600. But I also kind of want to hold on to these just in case if the dude does come back. Like, I don't care how long it's been. If he wants his Atari stuff, I'll give it back. And the last thing we have down here below that, just some movies. Uh, the entire series of Battlestar Galactica. Again, I love that show. I haven't watched it in a while, but I've really been meaning to watch through it again. And I've got The Lord of the Rings, all the Star Wars, all the Star Treks. And yeah. So that is my collection of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this look at my game collection. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and let me know about it in the comments down below. And also, if you saw any games that I have that you would like to see a review of, let me know in the comments down below. I am always open to suggestions for that. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I upload every Saturday. Thank you again for watching. I hope to see you next time.